Big Bang created the universe, there should have been equal amounts of matter and antimatter, the opposite mirror image of matter. But as far as we can tell, that's not what happened. So where's the antimatter? You Calgary researchers are on the hunt. So what is antimatter? Everything around us is on some, le some level made up of particles. But what we now know is that in addition to all the matter particles we see around us all the time, there is another parallel set of particles called antimatter, where it looks the same except its characteristics are inverted. So, so for example, if they're charged, they become, if they're positively charged, they become negatively charged in the antimatter universe. Tell us about your research at CERN. So my research at CERN is as part of the Alpha collaboration studying antimatter. I've already talked about the fact that matter and antimatter are simultaneously supposed to be mirror images of each other and created in equal quantities. And that our observations right now are in consistence with these dual uh, ideas. What we're doing at CERN is creating, storing, and studying atomic antimatter with the goal of understanding it better to try to explain the inconsistencies that currently exist at the foundations of physics around antimatter. So what will your next project be? We are currently building the Alpha-G apparatus. This is a CFI-funded, Calgary-led um, research grant to study the gravitational forces on antimatter. Right now, this is one of our most poorly understood characteristics of antimatter. And specifically, what's not understood is how, do, how does matter and antimatter interact gravitationally as opposed to how matter interacts with other matter gravitationally or how antimatter interacts with other antimatter gravitationally. This is going to be an experiment that we're aiming to launch in late 2018 and really could become uh, an interesting window into our understanding of the universe. So what are some of the potential applications of understanding antimatter? When you have antimatter and it meets matter, all of its mass is converted into energy. There is no more efficient way to, to store energy than in antimatter. When we burn fossil fuels, we're, we're converting bonds into energy, uh, chemical bonds into energy, which is only a minuscule fraction of the energy stored in the mass. When we then took this step into nuclear and thermonuclear, what we're doing then is undergoing a reaction that destroy, that either takes two small particles and makes a bigger particle or takes a bigger particle and splits it into smaller particles, destroying some of the mass in the process and converting it into energy. Much more efficient energy generating than, than, than burning fossil fuels, but still only a fraction. But now if we take the step to matter and antimatter, we can take all of the mass of an antimatter particle and all of the mass of the corresponding matter particle, bring them together, convert them all into energy. This is orders of magnitude more efficient at generating energy from mass. There's no better way to do it. The problem is we're not very good at making antimatter right now. The solution to that is understanding antimatter better. That's what we're doing.